Those altcoin gains are piling in now, and if you've been around the traps a while, you understand investing, you're probably getting a little bit fearful. That's a good sign, especially when everyone else is seeming so freaking greedy. So today's video, I wanna have a look at exit strategies. We're gonna talk about where to diversify into, a rotation from our profits into other assets, and of course, the exit strategy itself. So we've got some examples coming up in the video today. If you like the sound of that, be sure to hit the like button down below. Subscribe to the channel if you wanna stay up to date with cryptocurrency content and learning how to invest. We are going through everything on the channel, cycling our profits into other asset classes. So stick around for that. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Jason. Thank you for stopping by. As I've already said, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon if you are new here and you wanna stay up to date. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much, guys. Let's dive into the video. First up, what we're gonna to cover today. We're making the gains, let's try and keep them. All right, I know there's gonna be a lot of people saying this stuff's gonna go up forever and you're wrong and it's gotta go for another five years. Look, I've heard it all before. If that's your position, then maybe you're not interested in an exit strategy. That's fair enough. We all have our own games to play. The next point is not being a slave to our emotions. So if you're a highly emotional person when it comes to your investing and you love a little bit of a gamble, why the hell not? It's your money. You wanna feel something from investing in the market then having a plan is probably gonna help you out a lot in order to keep those profits and go and invest them or go and play with them somewhere else where you can get a much better bang for your buck in terms of your emotional well-being. Playing in the market, destroying yourself, trying to get a hit out of buying Doge at 10 cents and hoping it goes to a dollar is a fool's game. Go and take the profits, go and buy yourself a Lambo, do something else like that where you can actually have something tangible. Next thing is taking the guesswork out of investing and trading. So we're gonna have a look at our plans and how I've got it structured as a few examples. And then the last thing is stop being a FOMO sucker. Don't get sucked into the FOMO. These things can boom and they can possibly and probably will go a hell of a lot higher than we can imagine and we may not even sell out at the top. More than likely, the odds are against us actually selling the top. Warning to the new guys, there are scammers in the comments, so I'm not sending you WhatsApp numbers, telegrams, emails, anything like that. All of the official links are in the description that I'm gonna talk about in today's video and I'll put a pin post to the comments of this video and that will be hearted by me so you know it's my comment down there so don't get suckered into the scams out there i know there are a few of you who haven't seen them before so be safe uh, the other thing is you can follow me on instagram if you want to see my cryptocurrency portfolio it's my retirement fund updates so i'm only posting my retirement fund on there you guys can check that out we're up to about two hundred nineteen thousand dollars today as i record this video started with 26 grand earlier last year and lastly uh, i've got the investor accelerator group if you want to learn more about anything in today's plan we're going to go through it in a nice overview but if you want to get more detail on understanding how to cycle your profits out of anything go and check out the group. I have the timestamps to everything in today's video. So this can be a video you can come back to and reference throughout the bull market. We're gonna have multiple uh, bull markets within the major bull market. So this might come in handy throughout the year, 2021, maybe even 2022. Everything that's in the video can be used in any bull market. It applies to any asset as well. So keep it saved somewhere and come back and reference it if you need to, if you feel those FOMO feelings taking control of you. The main big thing is we wanna understand what an exit plan is, why we need to have one, and how we implement it. So what is it? It's a contingency plan to prevent losses. Investing is about surviving and thriving, all right? So gambling is the opposite. You just wanna try and make a bet and make as much money as you can as quick as you possible. Even if you did make that money, you will lose it because you haven't trained the mindset in order to keep the money. That's been the experience of myself and I know many other people that haven't been able to keep the, the dollars after they've made it from a quick win. So take the time, invest the time into building that mindset in order to create a bigger portfolio that you can use throughout your life and hopefully get away from your job if you hate your job. Swing the odds in your favor. So basically, it is very hard to time the tops and it's very hard to keep your money if you have made huge gains very quickly. So we wanna swing that in our favor. Take the slow and steady game. Crypto is extremely fast as it is, so you can even go slow and you're still gonna get there fast. 
Don't worry about not getting the top. We've talked about that. Just be comfortable with knowing you'll never get it. Doesn't matter. Even the best traders, investors in the world, they don't need the top. We just need to take the chunk out of the middle right there. Take that chunk, move it into something else. So the thing that can help with that is staying humble in what we're investing in. So if you are buying some cryptocurrency you think has to go to the moon and you're typing it in every single comment you see on YouTube videos with rockets and stars and fire and all this sort of crap emojis, just stay humble because that's going to help you stay level headed with your own investments. If you believe a cryptocurrency is going to rocket to the moon and it doesn't, you end up ruining your own mindset and that will stop you from investing in something else which can get you to the moon. Another part of an exit plan, what is an exit plan, is laddering in and laddering out. We can dollar cost average into a position and we can dollar cost average out of a position. So an example there is basically when you're getting in, you probably want to start the pyramid bigger at the bottom, smaller at the top. So you want to invest as much as you can when the market is down and smaller amounts when the market is at the top. Reason being is when the market swings against you, you're not going to incur huge losses. A lot of people start out with putting in a little bit of money just to test it, to see how it is. Market continues to go up, like, wow, I made 100%, I made 200%, but they've only put in 100 bucks or 200 bucks. Then the market's already gone two, three, four, five hundred percent and they're feeling very confident in their skill. And what happens is they'll start to put in bigger sums. Maybe they'll put in a thousand bucks, two thousand bucks, ten thousand bucks. Just make that whatever average it is for for yourself. If you're starting with a thousand or ten thousand, so what happens is when the market swings against them, because they have laddered in so high at the top, they make huge losses, and all of the gains they made from initially getting in are wiped out extremely quickly. So we've got to understand how we're laddering into the market and laddering out. So I like to look at it in terms of a pyramid facing up when we're trying to get into the market. And when we get out of the market, ladder that pyramid the other way. You can get out small and then as the market is still moving up further and further, you can start to take bigger chunks out because basically you continue to make more and more gains. So we can keep taking out more and more chunks. Your investment is still growing so you can still keep taking out big chunks. Next thing, have multiple exchanges set up. Uh, exchanges can go down during peak times in these really crazy situations. Example, last week even, we had CoinSpot down, uh, Independent Reserve was down, the other liquidity providers like Binance went down. There was a time where SwiftX was open. Now a couple of these are Australian exchanges. So for the Aussie guys, make sure you've got a few Aussie exchanges open. I'll have the links to these in the description down below. So keep your CoinSpot account ready, keep your SwiftX account ready, keep your independent reserve ready. Binance for the international guys, have a few options in case the markets get extremely busy and you cannot get into your exchange to sell. This is a good thing to have. Next, let's have a look at why do I need an exit strategy? We've just covered what it is and the parts that are made up of it, including the mindset. So let's have a look at why do I need an exit strategy? Won't the markets always go up? When is the best time to sell? Essentially, the markets won't always go up. We don't always have summertime in the world 24-7, 365 days a year, forever. Summertime is when we make the money, then the autumn comes, then the winter comes. It happens in every single market throughout history. If you want to bet on the four or five billion worth of history we have on planet Earth, and you think a market will always go up, be my guest. That's your decision. A market will never always go up. Anyway, Moving on, what is your sellout plan? Essentially, what are you looking at when it comes to that crypto that you're holding? Are you holding Cardano and you want to sell out of it, but you don't know when? You need to come up with a plan in order to sell out. I've given you a couple of options earlier, like as in what is an exit plan and some ideas there in terms of laddering, etc. But you need to have an idea in mind. How much percent will you sell out of that coin? and what price will that coin be when you're selling out at that percent. For example, Cardano is currently about a dollar. And if your plan is to sell out 20% of Cardano when it hits $2, then have that written down. You wanna sell out 20% of your Cardano at $2, and then you're ready to do that when that time comes. Because believe me, when it comes, it will be very hard to do if you haven't written it out, because in your mind, you think this thing is going to $10. 
Cardano should be $10. Everyone says it should be. Next thing you know, it gets to $7.50, reverses, shows over for a little while longer and you've missed out on the opportunity to sell, take some profits, have something sitting in USD and then be able to buy that dip again in order to have more Cardano for the next boom up. Just one step back, why do I need an exit strategy? I've got here regret. A nice idea around an exit strategy is will I regret not selling this coin right now? Would I regret it holding it and seeing the market go up even further than my sellout price or would I regret not selling at this price, seeing it go up a little bit more and then dump on me? My example here is Doge. I have a Doge plan which I talk about often on the channel. You can go back and see it on my videos. In terms of this, and this was a recent example, I sold well, I bought all of my Doge at 18 Satoshis. So I'm talking in Satoshis, not in US dollars. Then I sold out at an average of 87 Satoshis. This market went on to 260 Satoshis. So I could have made a hell of a lot more. But my initial plan was to make at least 4x out of my Doge investment. I was buying Doge when Elon Musk wasn't twitter twittering, tweeting about it. I was buying Doge when no one else was talking about it. I was buying it when people didn't think it was going to a dollar. I bought it at less than a cent. So I've made my 1000% and it was at least 4x on the Bitcoin value and I sold out. I said I would have more regret if I saw Doge go to the price that I said and in my plan and fall rather than if it went on beyond the price that I could ever imagine. So that's what happens. We sell out, take a chunk, move on to the next thing. These markets always dip again. They always have a uh, possibility of dipping really heavily. So the mistakes, that's essentially part of the regret, part of the mistakes. And I've talked about it there. 2017, there was a hype of XRP going to $10. It never made it to $10. All these people that bought at two, three dollars trying to get their three or five X got destroyed and they are still destroyed four years later. Don't be one of those people. We're going through a lot of questions here because when it comes time to create your exit plan, what I've noticed when I'm coaching people and when I'm talking about it with other cryptocurrency investors or stock investors is they don't know the questions to ask themselves in order to be able to come up with the answers. That has been a huge learning of mine. When you don't know something, you don't know something. So if you can take a few questions away from this, implement it in your own exit strategy, then you're going to come away a lot better, I would hope. So that's why I continue on with the questions. What is your goal for investing? If you don't have a purpose to this, it's going to be really difficult to stick around for the bear markets. It's going to be very difficult to sell out when that time comes because you just don't have a target in mind. What amount of money do you want? What is it do you want to get? Do you want to get a house at the end of this? Do you want to have a deposit for a home? Do you want to buy yourself a Lambo? Do you just want to have some money there to go on a holiday and maybe give some to your parents? So many of these ideas out there just come up with something that really feels right to you. It's got to feel right. You can't just do stuff that's in your head because it doesn't work. You can do it for a period of time, but at the end of the day, you need to marry the two up. You need to know what you're feeling and know what you're thinking, put them together, and that's going to help you come up with a plan or a goal that you can set your mind to and go after it. Write it down, make sure it is tangible at the end of the day and that you can track it. So when we're tracking it, we're tracking it against USD and the BTC value. Like you know, if you're a follower of the channel, BTC value is the most important because otherwise, why not just hold Bitcoin if you're only tracking against US dollar? So Bitcoin value is very important to watch as well. How do we pull the money out? You have to pay taxes. Are there places or ways that you cannot pay any taxes? Have, should you have planned this before you got into your crypto investing? Simple answer to that is yes. And I do have videos on the channel now and currently up, probably by the time you've seen this in the next week or two, I will have those videos. And if you're watching this in the future, those videos will be on the channel. I have done a video with some US cryptocurrency investors. You can check that out on the channel. Essentially, they pay zero tax on their cryptocurrency. They live in Portugal. There are many options like this. These can be extreme for some people, but if you are looking and setting your goals into the seven figures or maybe even mid to high six figures, it might be worthwhile exploring these ideas. The last thing you wanna do is make a million, two million, five million dollars and have to pay 50% of that back to the government. That would be disgusting. I don't think any government is worth two to, $3 million, depending on how much you've made, 50% in the taxes, 
nothing is worth that in your 12 months. You are not using $3 million worth of services in the community. You can help people out in your own way. That's my libertarian uh, th point of view right there. So let's move back to the exit plan strategy. All right, remember, uh, lastly here, our motto is to hit it and quit it. You only make money when you sell. Bring that into your uh, goals for your investing. You have an idea in mind of how much you want. You have to set yourself up in a particular way so that you can retain as much of that profit as you can to help yourself out and your community. And of course, the easiest thing to do is remember, hit it and quit it. Don't get married to a cryptocurrency. Now we're finally at the creating the plan section. So what assets should I buy with my profits? Now I've got a couple of examples here. It will depend on your goal. Something under $100,000 these are some of the assets that you could possibly flip some of your profits into. Greater than six figures, all of the above, we can get into that in a little more detail in other areas, but essentially the options are cash, stable coins, metals perhaps, stocks, and maybe property. Maybe you want to deposit for that, maybe property is cheap in your area and it's going to make sense. Somewhere like where I live, there's no point, basically no point in even getting a deposit out of less than a hundred grand. It's going to cost us at least a hundred grand to get something half decent here for a deposit for a property. Greater than six figures, end goal options, all of the above, except you can probably start to dive into them a little more, maybe a little more into the property uh, asset class, maybe look at something into commercial property. From there, you could maybe even have a chunk sitting in stable coins long term as your bank account to earn those uh, th that higher interest rate. And I'll get to that in a moment. The last couple of things in terms of creating your plan is maybe think about a dream goal out of all of this. Do you want to become a sophisticated investor? Do you want to make this a full-time job? And I say job because this is my full-time gig and I absolutely love it. I get to research all day and improve my financial position as opposed to someone else that has to do this on the side. They have to get up early, uh, then they have to get to a nine to five job. Then when they come home, they only have a, a short time with their family and then have to continue researching on their own. Do you wanna make this a full-time job? If that's the case, then maybe you'd have to reconsider where you're gonna put the money after you've made those profits. Keep that in mind, a sophisticated investor will require about $2 million in cash and an income of about 250 grand, depending on whether you're with a partner or not. And these these uh, figures change depending on where you are in the world. It's, normally, it's around two million dollars in assets and between two and three hundred grand in uh, some sort of income that you have coming in. And in that case, you can then go and invest in bigger projects, which smaller mum and dad investors can't get access to. It's kind of a sad way that it's set up, but at the same time, you need to have some sort of education in terms of being an investor. All right, so the last, what I've got here is the last thing, become a professional investor and leave your job. I know from a lot of people, they have said they hate their jobs and they just want to make money from the cryptocurrency markets in order to get out of their job. Try not to come at the markets from a position of fear, but from a position of empowerment and you will make better returns from the market. Whenever we're fearful trying to enact on a plan, it generally has less opportunity to work out. So empower yourself, learn, educate, and go after those goals that you've set for yourself. So our 100 grand example. Now, I've got here 50% is 50 grand, of course, if we're hitting our 100 grand goal of uh, profits. Cash out, so we can have some of that in cash, or we can have some in stable coins. And currently, a lot of these platforms are offering eight to 12% interest returns per annum. Some of the options are BlockFi and Crypto.com. I'll have links to these, the official links, remember, in the description down below. So BlockFi is offering 8.6% per annum. Crypto.com offers between 8 and 12% per annum on your stable coins. Link is down below. And BlockFi is at 8.6% against a USD stable coin. The other thing we can do is pull out 20% and put it into a stock portfolio. If that's the case, then we need to learn about stocks as well. So we understand charting on the channel. And the other thing we need to learn is fundamental analysis in terms of stocks and different companies to invest in. This, we can also earn passive income through ways of dividends. So you can go with higher growth stocks or large cap blue chips where we can get stable returns or you can then go and gamble in the stock market as well and try your hand at some of the emerging markets to get bigger returns. The other thing we can pull the other 20% from is for silver or if you want gold. So metals are in there because they do move. It's better than holding 
all in cash in my opinion of course none of this is financial advice these are just ideas to uh, go away and work on because it's all education not financial advice uh, the other thing is silver and i choose silver over gold because silver has a higher beta against gold which means it can move higher in value than gold it's kind of like investing in ethereum instead of bitcoin knowing now that they will probably have a pretty good long-term outlook so silver has a bigger range to move than gold but at the end of the day choose whichever metal suits you and lastly we can have our hodl bag of cryptocurrency which we'll never sell it's our hodl bag bitcoin ethereum they seem to be the two main players at the moment you choose what you like with these you can then also uh, deposit these into BlockFi or into crypto.com and earn yourself some interest on these major cryptocurrencies. So that's what I would look at in terms of an example of a 10 grand portfolio. If you happen to only make it to 80 grand, then obviously just adjust the percentages to suit that portfolio. For experienced investors, these are some of the extra questions once we get to this stage of investing. Things get a little more complicated, but we can learn about them as we go. What do we do when we have to rotate our profits again? What happens if Bitcoin goes up again? What happens if silver goes up? What happens if our stock portfolio goes up? These are all great areas or great problems to have, but we need to learn how to manage these issues. So if silver 5X is, what do we do now? Uh, learn about economic cycles, which section is down and which has the greatest opportunities moving forward. When is a good time to buy cheap cryptocurrencies for staking? So staking is another way that we can earn passive income on our portfolio. Lastly, should I buy real estate with my profits? Now, these are all additional investment questions that we need to ask ourselves. It's beyond the scope of this video. The, this is for the exit plan itself. But I do talk about this in the course, so that's for the Investor Accelerator. If you want to know more about that, there's a link to that membership course in the description down below. Go and check it out and join our community over there where we discuss all of these, uh, basically rotating our profits into different asset classes in order to create our passive income and nest egg vehicles. So that covers our exit plan. Now there's a lot of talk about the mental game leading up to it because this, from my experience, has been the most difficult part to overcome as a new investor, regardless of whether it's cryptocurrency, or whether it's property, whether it's stock market, it's a really difficult piece of the puzzle to understand and uh, to basically learn how to manage it. That's why we have a plan. And like we just saw on the previous slide, this is what we can sell into. This is an example of what we could sell into. Make sure you've got the percentages written down and the dollar figure written down where you want to hit. This is the overall part of the portfolio. It's not discussing the individual cryptocurrencies and how to get out of each of those. That was discussed earlier in the, in the video where we talked about whether it was regret, whether it was laddering in and out. So if you want to get into more detail in this, let me know or join the Investor Accelerator group down below. This is where we discuss these in a lot more detail. And it's basically around learning. There is no, in no place do I talk about what you should do because that is financial advice and I'm not a financial advisor. So we've got to really understand how we're going to play this game and then where we're going to put our profits at the end of the day. So if you enjoyed that video, let me know. Hit the like button down below. Join us on the channel, join the community, subscribe right here. Hit that bell notification icon as well so you can see more of this content when it comes out throughout the cryptocurrency bull market and into the bear market, which I should leave you as a point. If we get to a bear market, when we get to a bear market, do not leave the bear market. If you have to sell out, that's fine, but don't leave the markets. Never leave the markets if you intend on making this a full-time job or understanding your own finances in a full-time manner. The bear markets make us extremely rich. The bull markets can just make us money. If we can buy during the bear markets, that's where we get 10, 20, 50x returns. If we buy when everything else is shooting up, maybe we get two, three, 10 times returns, which are still fantastic in cryptocurrency, but the bear markets will make you rich, so don't leave them. It gets emotionally hard, but don't leave the markets. All right, if you did find some value, hit me in the likes down below. Let's see if we can get the video to a thousand likes and keep this video on your saved lists on YouTube so that you can come back to the video anytime throughout any market cycle. 
and you can reference this material. That wraps us up for another video on the channel. Thank you very much for joining me. I'll see you at the next one. And until then, have more fun to get more done.